And she knew the young lady he was messing with, who was very young. And she was like, he comes in here. She was like, I'll make sure because she was, it was almost like she was posing as me. So I was like, just, just in a, in a whirlwind. Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we we'll bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello, world. Welcome to another week of Elizabeth Stewart Williams testimony. I uh, hope you enjoy this episode. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Be blessed. I will there were times where I will wake up and just be like sad that I woke my eyes up. You know. And so so it was church. It was my mother coming. Those were the pieces of hope. And then honestly it was my son. So my my son would, he, there were certain times where he would just grab my face and he would just kiss me. And I'm, I'm like, it, it was almost like an awakening. Like, and then it was like, okay, we gonna make it today. Me and you gonna make it today. And those were the saving graces. And then I would, I would literally in my closet, just, I will lay and pray. When I would lay and pray, he would, he would bring his toys in there and close the door and and would sit with me. Like, and to me, that was nobody but God, because that was like a, a and then like, and then I'm pregnant at the same time. So this was not, I mean, it was almost like I would, sh- I would say, Hey, you got to shake this because who's inside of you is going to take on that nature. Like you got to, you got to shake. It was very, 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 very difficult, but those were the pieces. And then the gift of song, um, the gift of, of, I mean, I, I listen on repeat spiritual all day long. Now I will say what brought me joy. And this is what I learned. I had to learn and what has been a blessing even thus far. I found a show that I just enjoy. So I, you know, my family are, we're all singers. And so during that time frame was making a band. <laughs> Diddy's making a band. And it was the first, it was like the first season that had like really came out. And I used to laugh so hard or it would bring me joy or the note, like it was just, it was something about that show that it was like, oh, I'm going to laugh today. And then I was able to identify, okay, there are things that that bring me joy, no matter what may have been said or how I'm looked or how I'm seen, like joy. And w- so what I did was day to day, that's what I held on to, day to day. Yeah, I think you, you know, thank you again for sharing that because I know most people sometimes when they go through stuff, especially in the body, they run from God. Yeah. Like we're not taught like, I mean, it's easier to say when you go through your storm, come to church, listen to a word, fellas, it's easier said than done. That stuff is hard. It um, is. It's more so easier for women. I know when men go through stuff, oh man, we put up walls. It's a wrap. <laughs> Nobody ain't talking to us. Nobody ain't penetrating through our heart. So I, I thank you again for, for sharing that. You know, hopefully you'll, you'll bless somebody. So moving moving forward, um, baby number two, because I know you had a second child. So baby number two came. That was actually a saving. She was, she and to date, she says this. She was just like, I was, I was your depressed baby. I was, I was your, I was your, I cuddled her. Oh, she, she would. Her first word was mama. That's how much she she gave me such life. She was like, she was right there. Now she almost, I always tell her this, like both of my kids, I make fun because I'm like, y'all messed up mama's award winning shape. Before y'all used to make them apologize. 
Like, mama, we sorry that we messed up your award winning shape. And I'm like, you was worth it. But I let them know, like, sacrifices were done. But she, I breastfed her. She wouldn't take a bottle. So she, I couldn't just leave her. She refused to take a bottle. So she was like, she was here. If you saw, if you saw me, you saw her. And she was like, <laughs> cold. I cut. She was so fat. She was. I gave her as much milk as she wanted. She was so fat. Um, and she was. She was a almost like like just a blessing in the sense of pure joy for me. And it was during this time frame. So I I had her. This is when I start finding out um, that my ex was kind of dipping with others. Cause my thing was like, everybody kept telling me you can't leave him unless he's cheated. Unless you caught him cheated, you can't leave. Right. And so it was like, uh, there were certain things that were happening. I'll never forget one night I actually caught him talking to his ex. This is how old I am through the MySpace. Uh, and so He got, that's old, I know, right? He got really mad. And this is when the physical started back up. So with my situation, there's some people that have physical all the way through. So we have the physical initially. And like I say, I can fight. But he waited like three to four days after I had my my daughter. I had my stitches in and I found out he was talking with her. It was nobody but God. And during this time frame, I taught myself. So he would come at me about working and different things like that. But the reason why I was like, I'm not going to work is because you're going to live off of me. I won't see my kids. You'll, you'll, you know, I'm working to death and then you'll be living the best life without, without, and I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Right. I, I look back on maybe I could have did it a bit different, but I was like, no. So when I had her, I had a plan. Um, but that's when I found out he was talking with her. And this is when the 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 violence uh began to increase. So when he found out, when I'm looking at he's talking in my head, I'm like, if you talking to her, you cheating. <laughs> like that's it on my end. That's how I looked at it. He came in and I went back into the bedroom because I'm like, okay. He came in and took the, uh, we had a bassinet. He took the bassinet and threw it against the wall. The blessed part is she wasn't in it. She was in the bed with me. And so that's, you know, threats come in. He's going off or whatever. But in my head, I'm like, okay. Like that, that was, that was a start of it, of him like, okay, you cheated. So then the next day uh, we got into it, we got into it again because I'm like, okay, let's talk. Let's talk about this thing. And he didn't want to talk about it. And I'm like, dude, like I got, I have evidence, which I didn't need evidence. I'll get into that later, but I didn't need evidence because God had already revealed. God revealed that. Um, But I'm like, let's talk. And he would like, he just refused to talk to me. So I unplugged his game. And that's when he jumped up and he came close and I kicked him like you too close to me. Now I still got stitches. And he came, he came close. I was like, okay, like I'm that one. And we went, we went round toe to toe. We ended up putting a huge, big wall, like a, a big hole in the, in the wall. He hit me. So like, and I, I'm like a cat. Like I got on, like we were going at it. Uh, stitches came out. Like it is what it is. My wig. My wig flew off. <laughs> like it was real. Right. And so by this time, so I'm just like, okay, 
Like, this is it. And I, I literally passed out. I was on the floor. I passed out for, for a time frame. So I, I believe he felt it. Next thing he does is he calls my daddy. He calls my daddy over. Now, he doesn't tell my daddy that he hit me. He poses it that I hit him. Now, my daddy is prone to believe it because normally, like, I am that, like, I have, I am that one. And again, this is what Black women do. We're not going to reveal. So my dad is just like, he's agreed to go to counseling. He's done this. He done. But my daddy didn't know the full story. And that was on my end. I didn't provide it. But the reason why I didn't provide it is, again, you don't put your business out there like that. You handle this internally. This is what we're taught. And I was one that held true to that. Right. So I'm livid because not only did he call my dad, he called. So he called my support system. This is the same support system you were moving away from. This is the same one where you, you know, you was like, oh, you can't be around them. This is the same. But he called them. So I ended up, uh, he ago, he agreed to go to counseling. He agreed to do all of these other things. Uh, my dad was like, cause I told my dad, I, I'm ready to go. I get what y'all saying. <laughs> I get what y'all are saying, but I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Um, and so he went to, he went to counseling. He did a complete 180. He went to counseling he was like, we're not going to move anymore, but I did find this house. He went to church. Uh, we went scheduled a whole. So this this is going on for a whole year and a half. Right. Moved into a 5,000 square foot home. Gray had great equity in it. I actually agreed with the move because I was like, OK, great schools. He's like, we can just move here. This was the first time that when I signed the lease, everybody wasn't around me clapping. I could ask questions. Uh, we're going to we're going to church every week. It it looked like a complete 180, right? As soon as we moved into that house, he reverted back. And then he just he started just being gone. So something in me said, hey, go get, uh, and, and and before that time frame, my sister actually had came to visit me because she had saw, you know, what I was going through. Um, and she saw the a, a bit of the change, but she looked at me and she said, it's okay. You don't have to just stay in this place. And because I was still coming out of a dark place. And that was the other element. It was my mom and my sister. My sister said, you don't have to stay in this place. God gives leeway for separation. Like you don't have to continue on. So her sounding, her sounding voice. And then my mom, you know, that's what sustained me. But this complete 180 was a shock, but they weren't, I, I don't believe they were fooled. But I was in this place of hope because now I got two kids by him. I don't want to I don't want to be a statistic. You know, I don't I, I'm a I'm a preacher's child for a preacher's child. So all of these things are going in my head. And if he's willing to, you know, go to counseling, we're going to church like I'm just going to put this work in. But it was all the front. So we get up into this house and he's like barely there. So something in me was like, hey, you need to get your own. So I ran and I got my own car without his, without his name on it. Um, and then I ran and I said, you need to get you like the Holy Spirit was leading and I was listening. Like you need to just go ahead and get your uh, get you a job. Go ahead and go back part time. And by this time, so baby girl. Uh, she wasn't even completely born yet. And I got a I got a position with the state. I got a position with uh child protective services as a legal worker. And so uh and it was flexible. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. Um 
So he was actually excited that I did that. And then he began to really run the streets. Uh, and what was a major indicator that, so my sister really saw, my sister had got married that year and they stayed at, at our house and that we just moved into. And she saw how he was responding and acting. And she knew something wasn't right, like something wasn't up. And I'm sitting here like, I have the kids, I'm doing everything. And she's just looking like something isn't right. And he was flirting with all her bridesmaids. So she's looking like something isn't right with that. Um, so then it what he stopped really coming home the way he was supposed to come home. I knew his schedule. I knew how to call in and find out where he was. So he wasn't truthful about, he would say, hey, I have a turnaround. I'm not able to come home. But I already knew that that wasn't the case. So here it is. Uh, so I'm going to church by myself with two toddlers. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, and in me, this is so this is the first time where someone walked up to me and said, hey, uh, how are you doing? You know, at church, they were like, how are you doing? And I, I looked at them because I was like, I was about to lie because this is what we do. Oh, I'm great. I'm great straight lie. I was like, I'm not lying. I'm not lying anymore. What's going to happen is I'm, uh, I'm horrible. And I think my, I think my husband is cheating on me and the shock factor, <laughs> the shock look. Oh, oh, that brother and sister face who asked me how I was doing. They were so uncomfortable, but it was so freeing for me because I was like, I'm going to tell the truth in this place that is supposed to help me and connect me with Christ who is who and 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 who is a comfort like this place is the place that is supposed to pray for me and 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 bring me to a a space where I know everything is okay. This is a place. So I got to the point where I was like I'm not lying. Again. Like it was so freeing. And I was like, and and so the deacon wife, the one who used to help me with my son in the back, she overheard me. And she pulled me to the side and she looked, she said, baby, she said, now you're about to go through something. She said, don't let the health, don't let, don't let him bring you down mentally and health. You stay close to God and he's going to pull you through. She pointed at her husband. She said, this is my second husband. I was in a very abusive relationship and he was there for me. She said, you're about to go through it. I didn't even know what she was really talking about at the time. But she said, you, any questions, you come back and you, you talk to me. And she's like, I love you and I'm here for you. And I was like, I said, I didn't know it, but this is how God is. God will place people in your path to give you forewarning and give you some type of peace and comfort when you're authentic about where you are in your world, in your life. And so, uh, so I'm like, I'm looking at her and I'm like, okay, <laughs> and I go home the next day. So I had not seen, uh, I had not seen my ex in like two, three weeks. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna go pick up the kids. So I text him. So he was telling me he was coming. He actually texted me that day that he was coming home. Now this is, uh, what? Seven, seven, either seven days after our anniversary. We at that this time we've been married eight years. Seven years after our anniversary, uh, I went, picked up my kids from the daycare. Uh, so I had a full day of work, picked my kids up. So it's about three, three or four o'clock on a Friday. I get a text. So I'm texting him saying, hey, what time are you home? I'm cooking, right? I get a text from him that says, you've been a good wife. 
I have to do me. I'll be back in two years. I need you to hold it down. Um, and so I'm looking at him like, I'm looking at my, my phone like full of it. Like, boy, stop. You know, uh, what time will you be here? And uh, he said, the lights, the gas, the water, all will be off. You got to get that. You got to get that in your name. And <laughs> so I'm looking like, what? It's for, so it's closer to like five and I'm texting and calling, then pick up. So it's closer to like five o'clock. And this is during, this is like, this is like January. So it's cold, it's cold and it, and it, it gets dark quicker. It hits about five o'clock. Everything comes off. The lights, the water, the gas, everything comes off. And I'm sitting there like, I said, what? Now, in order for us to get this house, what I didn't tell you is, even though I didn't work, I even though I didn't work at a regular job, I am somewhat of, I wouldn't say so much a techie, but I like tech. So my brother, my older brother is a computer engineer. And so that kind of has rubbed off on me. So I, while I was pregnant, even though I was going through all of that I was going through, I taught myself how to do websites. I taught myself, I was one of the first to buy, before Bitcoin was really Bitcoin, I, uh, they had something else that was called, uh, it was one of the first tokens, right? And I actually had like 10 of these tokens that converted into Bitcoin later, but I didn't keep those to tokens. I actually had gave them to someone who bought pizza for me because we didn't have any food. And so, I, I mean, I regret it now, but I'm, I am like, so I... I like to read about what's happening in tech and the movement of it. And um, so I became what's called a Joomla expert. It was one of the first content management systems. So I taught myself all of this. I even, I was trying to connect with him so bad. I even uh, created an online car show because he was into cars. So I taught myself a lot. And then at the same time, um, I would take and I would, any monies that I made, I would kind of put up or, and I would put away. Um, but we, I mean, we didn't have, that was just for like a rainy day. So what ended up happening is I ended up out and through the house was able to secure enough money to where we did not have to ha worry about when we got this house, I was like, this is the house my children are going to grow up in. I agree with it, had all this equity in it. And I was like, okay, Lord, um, we had come to an agreement. We had worked things out. We went to the Bahamas for, you know, this is before he was leaving. And we had taken money uh, and I take I took my money. I put into this account. We don't touch this account. This account is for rent. And so by January, when he said everything will be off, we were with Wachovia. I'm looking at my text. My text is showing in the account zero, zero, zero. I said, what in the world? So we went from what you would consider or what I would consider pretty well off to like Nothing. Now, I did have a small amount uh, that I had set aside because I'm not dumb, but we really didn't have. So I'm like, I said, OK, Lord, I said, OK, I took my kids to my mom's house. And the next day I got up, called my sister. My sister was like, you got to get out the house. I was like, no, I'm going to try to figure out this is the house they're supposed to grow up in. I'm going to figure it out. Like, this is what's happening. Plus, we had over $60,000 worth of equity in our home. So, so I go to the bank. The woman felt so bad for me. She was like, 
Miss Stewart, we were supposed to have been foreclosed on this home. I said, what are you talking about? There has been an exact amount. So the exact amount that was being taken out of the account was being transferred or transferred out. She said, the only reason why we haven't is he opened up a personal account. He opened a personal account and withdrew that amount into that personal account. So we see that the money is there. We're just waiting for him to pay it. So I'm like, I said, what? Okay, well, what, how can it be mine? Like, what do we need to do? <laughs> like, but he was the primary on the home. She said, we can try, I'll try to get you to speak with the banker, this and that. But I was like, I said, she said, but you got to, she said, prepare if he, you know, if he doesn't, if he decides not to. And she knew the young lady he was messing with, who was very young. And she was like, he comes in here. She was like, I'll make sure because she was, it was almost like she was posing as me. So I was like, just, just in a, in a whirlwind. And so I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm I'm going through all these things in my head. So my sister was like, you got to get out the house. It's going to be okay. And I'm in tears. I mean, I'm like, okay, well maybe, you know, we could, I can figure this out, this and that, which again, I'm going back to, I can't be a statistic. I did it right. Like I did, like I was not a bad wife. (laughs) In fact, I have the, I have the, the text message that says I'm a great wife. Like, why is this happening? Right. So then, uh, my, my sister calls me and she gets real. She was like, because she has seen over the years, there are accounts over the year. There, there was one account where I had taken the kids, she needed surgery and I needed to go to Chicago and I had taken the kids to, um, I taken the kids to with me to Chicago and he dumped me off with no money, nothing. Like my kids could barely walk. You know, you need the little go kart and stuff. It was just a blessing. A man and and this young lady picked my bags up and took me, took me through. And when I got to Chicago, my sister she was livid because she was just like, why wouldn't he just take care of, care of you? And my sister paid for the plane flight. It was just, but those were the elements. I'm not in a loveless place. I'm I, I'm in a loveless place, right? So my sister was like, if you don't leave, I'm coming to get my niece and my nephew because they don't have to live like this. And this was the first time me and my sister do not argue. We do not fight. We do not raise. But she showed so much auntie love. She said, you can stay in this. You can stay in this toxic place, but they don't have to experience it. And that's when I agreed, okay, I got to get up out this house. So the blessed part is she called around for me and found an apartment. And let me tell you how God works. Cause I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough money for an apartment, but what God, what God did. So the, the, the leasing agent, she was pregnant. And what the leasing agent did is she was like, okay, uh, we have a special going first and second month free. Uh, half off third month, half off uh, last month rent. No, I didn't have to pay anything to apply. <laughs> no security deposit. They waived, They just waived everything. It was completely free for me, <laughs> for me to move in and fill out. So they ran my credit, my number. They didn't, they, so I knew from having a house, we just got the house a year ago. I knew, you know, my credit score. I didn't have anything on my credit, but, but, uh, but student loans, but they ran the number. And when you were during that time frame when you were married, if your husband used your, uh, social with his name, 
it wouldn't pop up on my credit. But when you run the social, it shows everything. There were apartments, there were there were things all in my name. There were lights, there was water, there was I said, what? None of it. What? A, what? And she was looking and she was just rubbing my the belly. And I'm crying and I'm calling these people. They didn't have my name. They didn't have my name listed at all. They had his name. So I'm like, and they sent paperwork over saying, no, this is not hers. This is not hers. This is not hers. It was his. So I said, okay, so this is what we're doing. And she rubbed her belly and she gave, she said, the only apartment we have is on the third floor. And I said, I'll take it. And I was able, so when they ran that, it dinged him. So I had called my brother, my younger brother, and my brothers did not know. My dad did not know. Every, my my brothers and my dad are just finding out a lot of details in these last three years because we were trying to keep them in the ministry. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, People don't realize I kept a lot because I'm like, you know, I'm like, it's it's more important for them to preach the gospel because, you know, so my brother came, he came with the truck. I said, hey, uh, you know, I'm because I had and, and by this, I hadn't seen my ex in like going on a month. I move. I started trying to move stuff out. He runs home. That day, he said, everything in this house is mine. Like, and I'm looking at him like, I don't know who or what has been in here. So at at this juncture, the way that I felt was like, just give me the clothes, me and my kids clothes. And we took some, maybe some forks and some spoons and literally left. So I'm in this apartment empty. I'm, I'm like in, in a whirlwind. But this was the first time that my kids ran around laughing out loud. My kids did not laugh. Mm. This was the first, and I'm looking at, I'm sitting on the floor with my hand in my head, like, and I'm looking at my, and they are giggling and laughing. I called my sister. She said, what's that in the background? Y'all got a TV? I was like, no, that's the kids. She said, What? My kids did not. If you look at pictures before, my son looked so strained. Um, like there were moments of, you know, when we would have happiness outside of the home, but not like this. And they ran around and I just looked. So then the next day, and I'm going to progress this really quickly. Then the next day, um, I get a phone call and the phone call is from a friend who is a court clerk. And she said, do you know you're going through a divorce? So let me tell you this. I never prayed that I would stay with my husband. Never prayed that. My prayer was this. I said, God, if he's going to pull me and you, me me and my kids away from you, remove him. That was my prayer. My prayer was never to stay. My prayer was, if he's going to pull me and my kids away from you, remove him, right? So the next thing I know, she called. She said, do you know you're going through a divorce? I said, I had no idea. (laughs) I was like, wow. She said, yeah, they can't find you to serve you. Stay tuned for more as we delve more into Elizabeth's powerful, God-given testimony. See you next week. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you.
Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized, you will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You've heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.